Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you could see from the setup, it's a little bit different again. Um, I apologize for always moving around a bit, but I am back at my parents' house for the Easter season, and I was going to film this video on Friday while I was still in my apartment, but I just got caught up with work, and then I also, Kevin's younger sister slept over and we also had dinner with his family so things got a little bit hectic and I decided to kind of just take it easy for the night and I knocked out at 11 o'clock so I just wanted today to be kind of a chill video and to kind of just talk with you guys and discuss like some things that have been going on kind of in the beauty industry. I just wanted to talk about things that were kind of fun and trying to let loose a little bit. So today's video is going to be a shit I'm not buying, trends I'm not trying video. I don't know if anyone has done a title like that. If so, I will credit them, but I don't think anyone's done anything like this. Obviously, there's the anti-hauls, which were started by Kimberly Clark um, on YouTube. Also, there are people that are saying that they're not going to try certain trends. I just, I'm talking more so about the, the name of this type of style of video as far as copying people goes. I hope no one has done the same title for something. Yes, yeah, so this video is going to be kind of negative, I guess, but I hope that we could all have fun with it and realize that, that we shouldn't be taking these things too seriously and have all our feelings laid out on the table so that brands can do better for us. Because at the end of the day, we're the ones that are buying the products. I'm going to kind of shift from products to trends to products to trends to kind of shake things up because there's not just products that I think are stupid that people shouldn't buy but there's also trends that I think are really dumb and in a way a little bit harmful at times so I kind of just want to shake things up and do both so you want to see some of the stuff that I don't want to buy and also the trends that I think are a little bit ridiculous then please keep on watching. So first up in the products that I'm not buying, or aka the shit I'm not buying, is the Too Faced Festival collection. I don't know if people have seen too much of this, I know Jackie Ina did a review on it, and Thomas Halbert said that he was doing a review on it, but he ended up hating the video so much that he didn't post it because of how terrible the products were. And I kind of have an issue with Too Faced and just the obnoxious palettes that they've released and kind of the low quality stuff that they've been doing recently. Recently, and I think the festival collection is kind of another tier of that. You know, they've done a lot of stuff with unicorns that have pissed me off, and I'll get into that later in the video. But they've just done really lackluster collections, and I was looking at the stuff that they released for it, and it just none of it was riveting. The palettes looked chalky, and it, it didn't seem like anybody put a lot of thought into it. I just don't think that these collections are really necessary. Too Faced, I feel like, paces themselves very well. But to go from chocolate bars to a festival and to unicorns. I just don't understand the theme of the brand and I just don't feel like any of the products that they're releasing are very exciting. It just doesn't seem like it's something that I want to spend my money on. You know, when I make purchases, I try to make them worth my while. And they also release it at such a bizarre time because everyone was like, oh, Coachella is coming up and this festival and that festival is coming up. I'm like, where? Because I don't think that they are. It's April and we just got snow the other day. Like, there's nothing that is going to make it worthwhile to buy a collection that is dedicated to festivals at a time where festivals aren't happening or they're not really that popular. I feel like everyone rode the Coachella wave a little too hard and now they're all belly flopping on the sand because these collections dedicated to festivals and putting dots all over your face, like none of it's gonna work. None of it's fashion, none of it's good anymore and I just don't think that it's relevant. So that's one of the things that I'm not buying purely because I don't think that it's good and I'm not interested in it and from what I've seen it's really not that riveting. Now moving on to a trend that I'm not trying are these brow trends and this is more so a trend on Instagram. Most of the things that I'm talking about as far as trends go are from Instagram. That is the clickbait central like people call out YouTubers for having clickbait thumbnails and clickbait titles but I swear IG is the worst when it comes to clickbait and you will see pictures of girls with a whole circle around their eyes calling them a halo brow and squiggles and photoshopped braids into their brows and they try to call it a trend and have people do them and they just get 
this high of Instagram clout for no longevity. They call it a trend, but it's really, nobody's doing it on a realistic basis. When I think of a trend, I think of something like crop tops or hoop earrings or, you know, some kind of eyeliner trick or like cut creases and stuff like that. Those are trends because those are things that people see, like, and continue to do. I don't like messy trends where it's like, it's a trend because it's stupid. I hate to be mean because these people do have a lot of, you know, work put in to what they do as far as clickbait goes but to call it clickbait and then to call it a trend I think is really disrespectful to people that actually put in a lot of effort to create things that are going to be noteworthy and end up in style magazines and stuff like that and for those same style magazines to talk about something like a halo brow as a trend when realistically no one's going to actually be doing it in their day-to-day -day life I think that that is really condescending and I just I'm not, I'm not here for it I just don't think that it's worth my time. I, I hate to be so nasty because these people really do have a lot of effort into their work, but if your work is photoshopping a brow onto your face that's a mile long, I don't necessarily know if I want to call that art. I just call that a gimmick. And if you're gauging popularity on your Instagram page and your YouTube page off of a gimmick, then gimmicks fade just as quickly as trends do, even quicker. So I would rather go with a trend and then hip over to a new one than to create a gimmick that you're going to be recognized for two seconds for and then people are going to forget you the next day because like me they're realizing how dumb it is you know you can't recreate the wheel and create a new smoky eye like that's not what's going to happen but you can create things that are unique that are going to be popularized in the media that aren't ridiculous and are a fad Next up for products that I'm not buying. It hasn't even been released yet, but I could tell you for sure that the ABH Unicorn highlighters or whatever, I, no, it's a no from me. I, I already discussed how the unicorn trend is kind of overdone and obnoxious, and the fact that a brand like Anastasia Beverly Hills is actually going to try something such as the unicorn phase, I just, I can't understand it from a PR perspective. I can't understand it from a trend perspective because if you really think about it, nobody's doing unicorn anything anymore. We rode on that wave from Too Faced for a while. Even Tarte did some things that were based on unicorns and I just don't find it to be that exciting anymore. And it's just very peculiar that brands are still doing the unicorn theme. I just, what's so exciting about it? Can we just talk about that for a second? Like one-on-one, -on -one, like what's so interesting about a goddamn unicorn. Like at least with mermaids, there's like a little bit of pizzazz there. There's a little bit of nostalgia, you know? What young woman or man didn't swim in the pool during the summer and think that they were a mermaid at some point, you know? Did we all not watch Splash? Did we all not watch H2O? Like, we, we all wanted to be a mermaid. So I can I kind of understand mermaid trends and mermaid themes, you know? I like those. I think that those are fun. But even those, it's just, it gets a little much after a while. But the fact that we're still doing the unicorn thing, I just can't understand it. Like, unicorns aren't the only things that are holographic. If you want to do something holographic, do something holographic. You don't have to call it unicorn. I just don't understand why the unicorn thing is such a thing. Like, there's so many other mythical creatures that you could go off of, but you pick that? Like, where's the Athena collection? Where's the Medusa collection? Like, can we get those kind of themes? Like, the Loch Ness Monster collection? That's a collection. Let's have a Loch Ness Monster collection. Am I right? Some nice green, some grays, you know, like some dark cool tone colors for the summer like I feel like that's a that, that's something that the brand should get on top of like I'd rather something like that than the unicorn stuff and the fact that it's always just like a purple and a blue and pinks and whites holographic type stuff I feel like it's just very boring there's so many highlighters that aren't even unicorn theme we also don't have to create so many holographic things I feel like it's very unrealistic it only looks good in an editorial way I just I'm not excited about it and the fact that ABH is trying to do the unicorn thing is also very disappointing so that's a product that I am not interested in at all and I haven't even seen it yet and that's just really saying something I'm over it I'm not gonna deal with it Moving back on to trends, the eyelash thing? 
not particularly interested. I mean, if you don't know, it's when you use the spoolie on $1 lashes that you got at the dollar store and you just rake it through the lash a little bit and comb it through and it suddenly becomes like a wispy, sexy lash and it looks way more expensive than it did when you first bought it. We all know those kinds of plasticky looking ones that don't fit comfortably on the eye that look like Halloween lashes that are only decorative and don't really work for a natural look, but I don't necessarily really think that I want to go through with the spoolie thing and try to create something new out of the lash. I don't know. I feel like I don't really have any crappy lashes, but I'm also not going to go out of my way to buy them. I feel like this is a good trend for people that already have really crappy lashes and want to do something fun with them, but uh, it's just not for me. I don't think I'm going to go out of my way to buy something. Not that it's really like breaking the bank, because if it's like a $2 lash, it's a $2 lash, you know? It's not going to affect me financially, but to go out of my way to do that just to do a trend and to figure out if it works like I, I don't know the if it works like mantra that people are going off of it's like I don't know I'm not a scientist I'm not part of BuzzFeed Unsolved, you know, I can't, I can't just devote my entire life to try, trying out hacks. Like, that's not the type of channel and we're gonna run over here. But if you want to do it, then go ahead. I don't think that it's stupid. I don't think that it's dumb. I don't think it's ridiculous. I don't think that it's obnoxious. I just think that it's a little, you know, I think that the trend kind of died down because I think like me, other people are realizing like, I'm not gonna go out and buy $2 lashes just to see if it works, you know? You know, I don't have any lashes in my repertoire right now that are really crappy that I feel like I have to do this fully trick on them. I did think that it was fun and exciting and I actually reposted it on Facebook and stuff so I do think that it's really cool and I'm very pleased that somebody like thought to do that but uh, I just don't think it's for me but it is fun and um, I don't really have any problems with it on paper. I think that it's really fun and there's nothing that you're doing that's wrong. It's just not something that I want to do so. Okay back to products that I am not buying. I thought that I was just going to be talking about the Conceal, Bake, and Brighten collection from KKW Beauty, but now I guess I also had to talk about the new eyeshadow palette because a week went by and all of a sudden she's got two new products out and everybody's already doing reviews on the eyeshadow palette too, whatever. In case you didn't know, Kim Kardashian West, as we all obviously know, she is doing makeup launches right now and she recently did one for concealer and baking and brightening. So she has baking powder with it and also a brightening powder to put under the eyes to wake up the face bubble. Not something that you haven't seen from one of my videos, of course. She released that and I was going to talk about that, just that. But then a week later and before I could even like come up with a list of things to discuss in this video, she has an eyeshadow palette out with this vibrant blue that everybody is using and these regular monotone browns. Once again, these matte brown colors that everybody uses. I just can't. It's just almost laughable at this point. Like, we get it. We want to do brown smoky eyes. Does every brand need to put that out? Like, is that a thing that needs to occur? Whatever. I just, I, I, I'm not interested in the brand. Just like I'm not interested in Kylie's brand, I'm not interested in Kim's brand. I don't think that she's doing anything riveting. I do think that it's really cool that she, the, the types of kits that she's coming out with, I feel like they're all very cohesive and they go along with some of her makeup hacks that she didn't create, her makeup artist created. I'm just glad that he's getting the credit that he deserves, honestly. But I don't know, I just don't think that she's doing anything that is new and fresh and that's what a lot of people are saying because they are doing reviews because they got PR but um I'm happy with the people that are being brutally honest about it you know it's it's concealer it's stuff that we've been doing for a long time on YouTube so for her to be like new to the game and try to release something new that she thinks it's not really new and we all have their baking powders of choice we all have our brightening powders we have our own concealers that we like with much more products than hers includes and a much bigger shade range than hers includes as well. There's many other products that you could use in spite of hers. I just, you know, I, I, I feel for her and I feel for her newness into the makeup branding situation, but you know, she has enough money. She doesn't need to make any more off of my coins for her makeup that I could get at any drugstore. Everybody has a baking powder. Everybody has a concealer. You could find what you like and you don't have to buy a $30 kit for it. And like I said about the eyeshadow palette too, it's just like, I felt like it was too quick. If it's collection after collection after collection, product after product after product, I kind 
kind of get confused and I don't know what's new and what's rebranded and I just I can't follow along because my attention span is already towards so many other different brands anyway that I kind of fall out of the loop. Like I knew that it was a new product but I was just like it's being released now. Like I thought it was gonna be like a month away or something like that like, but no she released it right away and I just didn't think that, that was a very good PR move or a merchandising move and ugh, I don't know. It's just a very like blase palette, you know? Like I I I feel what everybody feels about the the bright vibrant blue. But other than that, it's just a basic smoky brown eye shadow palette you get from any other brand and I just didn't think that it was smart to do. PR for it has been kind of funny and the fact that everybody went to the party for it I'm not saying that anyone's going to be biased because I do think that her products are probably really good, but like we get it. Like, you're, you're popular going to a party with Kim K and you're gonna take fabulous photoshopped pictures with her. Not that that's a problem because that's what I'd be doing, but I just think that it's all a little bit funny. How Benefit did like the brand trip and then they released a new product, which is like, of course they did. But I think that Kim K is doing it in another way where it's like, hey, come to my party and do a review on my eyeshadow palette that I released two seconds after my other product that you didn't really like. I feel like that's what's happening. Get your coins, I guess. Um, not not just Kim K, but other influencers as well. You know, get your money, whatever. I don't mind, but it's not something that I'm going to dedicate my money to. They have enough, no more. If I watch one episode of the Kardashians, that's fine. That's my charity move for the day, you know? It's a tax write-off, so. Anyway, okay. The beauty blender and the microwave. Does anyone wanna explain that to me? Does anybody wanna justify that to me? So this girl on Twitter, she said that she soaked her beauty blenders in soap and water and then microwaved them for whatever amount of time. I believe it was a minute. And they came out and she squeezed all of the crap and crud out. All of the dirt and crap that was in it came out and she has clean beauty blenders. Somehow. She didn't film the process. Nothing was shown. It was documented in picture form and just word of mouth. And a couple of people right away kind of tried it. Um, it was funny because there was this one girl that did it right away and her beauty blender like melted in the microwave and everyone was like she watched the first 10 seconds of the video and didn't go any further than that and she just threw it in the microwave. <laughs> She didn't even put it on a plate or anything. It was just really funny and stupid. She was like, well, my video glitched out. I couldn't watch it. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Like, whatever. It was just really funny. And that was it for me. Like, I was like, okay, this is funny. No one do it. Please, no one do it. Just like, don't do it. Like, what are you doing? I can understand, like, when you want to wash a sponge that you use in the sink for your dishes or whatnot, sometimes you could throw it in the dishwasher and it'll clean it out, rinse it out a little bit. It won't make it, like, sterilized, but it'll clean it. I'm wondering about putting a beauty blender in the dishwasher, how that would work. But I'm, I'm not gonna create a new trend. I really, I don't want to be responsible for your beauty blenders. I'm just thinking it's like, there's so much crud that is so deeply into the sponge. It's the creams and stuff that you're putting inside of it. There's powders, it's so cakey in there. And it penetrates deeply because of how compact the sponge is and how small the pores are in the sponge. So everything's getting really deep in there. And there's bacteria in there and stuff like that. And I guess people thought it would be wise to put in the microwave to kill bacteria and to get rid of all the dirt and grime. But I just don't think it's worth it. Even if it does work, um, there's been a few people that have tested it out. I think Kim Tai just had a video and a couple of small, smaller influencers have done videos on it to see if it works. My beauty blender was, what, $25? And I still have a bunch of under, other sponges too that I love. I just don't know if I'm willing to risk it. I'm not saying it's not gonna work, but I just don't know if I'm really willing to almost give up something. Like when it comes to like the eyelash hack, I'm not losing out on anything if I do it. But but with the beauty blender thing in the microwave, it's like it could be the best hack in the world, but I'm willing to risk it. Like there's heat and microwaves involved and there's just so much of a risk. And that's something that I'm going to be putting on my face again, you know? Like I, I have to think about it, you know? I just I just don't know how good it's going to be for my skin, for my mental health for my economic health, my well-being as a person, like, 
emotionally I am not prepared to put my beauty blender in the microwave and I hope everyone can understand that. I will not be trying this out. There's some people that were trying it and it worked but it didn't work that well and they were still dirty, you know? So I just don't think that it's something that... <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. It's just so stupid. Like, I guess you could do whatever you want. It's the internet, right? But if your beauty blender melts into looking like a strawberry gumdrop, I can't be here to rescue you. Okay, what the thumbnail brought you here for. A product that I'm not buying, and the last one on my list is the Halo Beauty Skin Booster Pills. Is there any surprise there? Like, is there really? Like, I feel like I'm still on this whole roller coaster of drama that has to go along with all these products, and some of it may be old news to some of you, some of it may be still interesting, but I will say that I am not very interested in trying out Tati's magic pills. And it's it has nothing to do with any of the science behind it, any of the controversy of what I'm putting in my body, none of that. I eat hot Cheetos and drink three gallons of beer a day. I don't think I am the pinnacle of health for what it comes to putting in my body. There's no way that I could ever justify it for that reason. I just don't want to do it. Like, what the hell? You're Tati. You are Tati Westbrook. You do five videos a week. You do review videos. You review every shitty product that has ever existed on this planet. You test out strange things, really expensive things, top tier products, and then you're over here creating a pill? Do you have a, a manager, a PR person? Like, nobody was telling you, maybe you should do this later. You know, establish your brand before you go for the bazaar, you know? Like, I just think that it's very weird. It's like Tati, like, I know her for makeup, you know? And even though, like, she has said, like, oh, I use, you know, vitamins all the time, I've always used them, and she does dry brushing too, which I do as well, but you're a makeup influencer, a beauty influencer, and I just, you couldn't just release like a, maybe a primer first? I know when she said like, who said it's makeup? I was just like, please be skinny care. And it wasn't even that. You take it for three months and I guess your hair is shinier, your skin gets better, and then your nails are nicer. And it's like, it's laughable, honestly. Like, I support her 100%. I love her. I've had my ups and downs with her um, as far as her friendships have gone and, you know, the type of content that she was putting out. I felt like some of the stuff that she's done is problematic, but, you know, who isn't? And, you know, I've kind of, like, resurrected my friendship with Tati on that kind of level. And I'm still subscribed to her and I love her. And I did watch her entire, like, hour-long video on everything with Halo Beauty and all the drama surrounding it. And I was very perplexed at how nasty people were being towards her and I was kind of taken aback by that. I would never be blatantly disrespectful to her because this is her brand, but I just don't get it. Like, why was that the first thing that you wanted to create? And she talked about how expensive it was and I'm like, girl, well, it's a good thing that she made it so expensive because if people buy three, then she's making a lot of money off of the select few that are purchasing it. And she's also making a lot of money on the people that are getting views from trying out this product and trying it themselves and, you know, more power to her. I'm proud of her as a businesswoman for making this step in her brand and it is a great thing but I just a vitamin is not really something that I am excited about as far as the beauty industry goes and it's not the beauty industry I, it's not classified as that it's pharmaceuticals and so funny someone was like drug peddler Tati Westbrook <laughs> I still think about that all the time but no she it, I, she has good intentions. I think I believe her. I believe her products and you know She's been very willing to have everything tested by a third-party lab and things like that She's sponsored all those kinds of things and she she wants people to believe in her product because she believes in it And she has seen the results from it, but I just something that I am interested in I just who, who what young girl especially my age 21 still has like great skin great hair great nails would be Interested in a product like that. I don't really take a vitamin. I don't take care of my body either. Let's not get crazy. But I just don't think that it's beneficial for me to take a vitamin, you know? I just, I'm not ready for the neon green pea. I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared to pass on that before the sun goes down because I have no lights here. Um, I just want to talk about, I guess, the last trend, which isn't really a trend, but is more of a movement, I guess, is the calling out YouTubers movement. 
I guess Jordan Byers did something like this. I've never heard of this woman before she did this, um, and she's not even getting that much clout for it either. But this whole thing about like smaller influencers and smaller YouTubers and creators calling out bigger YouTubers and influencers, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube and calling out brands too for not recognizing them or crediting them where credit is due, they believe is due. Um, I just, I'm not on board with it. And I think it's more of like, an ethics question. It's like, do you really think that as a smaller influencer that these bigger people that have meetings to go to, that have events to show up to, that have videos to film are really concentrated on smaller influencers who they've never seen before in the work that they do and feel like they're going to care about stealing your work? Like, I just, I don't think that they're thinking that far into it. And for smaller influencers to believe that the whole world revolves around them and that these YouTube YouTubers are kind of stealing their popularity. I just don't feel like that's a thing that needs to be worried about. There's so many other things that we as influencers on YouTube and Instagram can really complain about, you know, like the, the algorithms, the how our tagging isn't working and it doesn't matter like how many views we have and how things have changed so much as far as, you know, monetization goes. We could complain about those things in a healthy way. We shouldn't be complaining about bigger YouTubers who have also worked very hard to get where they are. You know, you don't get a million subscribers overnight. I know that personally, you know? I can't get 100 subscribers in one afternoon. And, you know, I don't expect that. And so... Uh, just don't think that it's very classy to call out YouTubers. I just don't think that it's real. I think that it's a fake fight. And to also call out drama channels for doing things that tabloid magazines have been doing for years, I just don't think that it's valid. And a lot of these drama channels and bigger YouTubers, they get their facts straight. And that's the kind of culture that we live in now because people criticize everyone so harshly for, you know, not having sources and not having all their info straight. And, you know, everybody's held liable now just by the, the media's eye, not even in a legal situation, but just the public will feel like if you don't do something ethically, that you should be punished for it and boycotted. And people understand that. So they are trying their hardest to get facts. And it's really not that hard to get the facts. So I just don't believe in smaller creators creating a mountain out of a molehill. Like if you're not, your channel isn't doing well, then it's because nobody likes your channel. You're just not doing something that people want to watch. And you could blame other things, but don't blame other other people, you know? You could always criticize the platform because they don't seem to give a shit. Don't call out bigger influencers. They're just doing a job like anybody else. I don't know, that's my thought on that. That's not a trend that I'm gonna get into. All right guys, this was hopefully not too long of a video. These were the products that I'm not buying and also the trends that I'm not going to be trying. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you want more videos like this and comment some of the products that you don't want to buy and trends that you don't wanna try. Yeah, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye.